We're now going to do our first real-world example of illustrating the difference between marginal and average. And what I'm going to do is talk about the structure of U.S. federal income taxes in the mid-1980s. This was when Ronald Reagan was President of the United States, and he made an agreement with the Democratic Congress to simplify the U.S. income tax structure. I want to talk about the way it looked, graph its average and marginal, and then discuss the political fate of this structure. So in the upper graph, I have on the horizontal axis income, and on the vertical axis the income tax. I've got four different income levels labeled on the horizontal axis as I1, I2, I3, and I4. Between income levels of 0 and I1, no one uh, paid income tax. If your income level was between I1 and I2, then you paid 0 on your first I1 dollars of income, and 15%, which is the 0.15, on the, um, the income that you earned between I1 and I2. Between I2 and I3, you can see how the income tax line uh, curves, uh, goes up. It's now at a slope of 0.28. Uh, between I3 and I4, it goes up steeply at a slope of 0.33. Now this uh, graph is not drawn to scale. Actually, 0.33 in, the, in reality doesn't look that much different than 0.28. But I had to do it this way so that you could get it all. You could see it all on one on one graph. And then beyond I4, it went back to a slope of 0.28 and you can see that the, the line that it follows to the right of I4 is also a line that goes, um, if you were to extend it to the origin, it's at a slope of 0.28. So what I want to do first is graph the marginal and average of this total tax function and then discuss the implications. So the first thing we're going to do is the um, marginal. The marginal is actually pretty easy. Between 0 and I1, the well, marginal is rise over run, but there is no rise between 0 and I1. If you were to, to take two arbitrary points on the function, draw a straight line between them, and then ask well, what's the slope of that line, the rise is 0, the run isn't 0, so you have 0 divided by something, which is 0. So, um, so the marginal is equal to 0. So between 0 and I1, we have a, a zero marginal, sort of like, like this on the bottom graph. Between I1 and I2, the slope is 0.15, and the slope is the same thing as the marginal. So the slope between I1 and I2 doesn't change. It's always going to be 0.15. So I have 0 0.15 here. Then between I1 and I2, it's going to be a constant at 0 0.15. Another way to think about that is if you were to pick any two points on the graph and draw a straight line uh, in and then, then figure out what the slope is between them, you would calculate that that slope was 0.15. Between I2 and I3, we have another straight line, and therefore we have another constant slope. The constant slope here is 0.28, so if I write 0 0.28 on the bottom graph, then I'd have a flat uh, line for the marginal. Uh, it's a constant at 0 0.28. Between I3 and I4, I have another straight line at the top. Its slope is 0.33. And so on the bottom graph, I have 0 0.33 and a constant slope between I3 and I4. Beyond I4, as you can see on the top graph, the slope goes back to 0 0.28. And so beyond I4, I'll have the same thing I had a little bit earlier, 
0 0.28 and that will just continue forever. So that's what the marginal looks like. And before I get to the average, let me talk about this a bit. This was controversial. The different ranges for the marginal, 0 0.15, 0 0.28, 0 0.33, these are called tax brackets. And before this law was passed, it was always true that if you had a higher income, you were in a higher tax bracket. But after this law was passed, you can see that people in the, the highest levels of income, beyond I-4, are in the 28% tax bracket. But people between I-3 and I-4 are in the 33% tax bracket. So if your income was slightly below I-4 and then went slightly above I-4, you went from a 33% a tax bracket before to a 28% tax bracket afterwards. In other words, people who earned the most amount of money were not in the highest tax bracket. They, they were in a lower tax bracket than people who were earning between I-3 and I-4. This caused a lot of controversy, a lot of unhappiness in the uh, among the general public, and it's actually the reason why this system was abandoned. Uh, shortly after 1986, uh, it was uh, structured so that the marginal tax brackets always went up. But now let's look at what the average tax rate is in this scheme. So average I'll graph with an orange color. <coughs> Well, the average, as you'll recall, is determined by a line from the value of the function to the origin. If you're below I1, then, for example, if you're at, at this point here, it's a slope of a line from the origin to here, and that slope is 0. If you're here, it's a slope of the line from the, from the value of the function, which is 0, to the origin, which is the slope of this line, which is also 0. So to the left of I1, the average tax rate is 0. that. How about it? Uh, let's go all the way to I2. To calculate the tax rate at I2, we go up to the function like this and draw a line between the origin and the function. So that looks more or less like the following. Whoops, let me not press so hard. Okay, so you can see that that orange line has a very flat slope. It's flatter than 0.15. It's it's um, certainly positive, but not not very positive. So, ha, let's just verify something. At I1, you have a zero slope because you're just here, and the slope of a line from here to here is zero. So you have a slow rise in the average tax rate. And when you get to I2, you're still less than 0.15. So we've got a slow rise. And when we get to I2, we're still less than 0.15. There's no jump at I2 in the tax rate. Uh, a line drawn from the origin to a little bit below I2, or a line drawn from the origin to a little bit above I2, whoops. Let's see what's going on there. So as I was saying, an orange line drawn from the origin to just a little bit below I2, or I2, or just a little bit above I2, would all have roughly the same slope. So there's no, disc th there's no large change in the marginal that happens, that, I mean, I'm sorry, in the average that happens at I2. If we're between I2 and I3, then we get lines like the following. So that's a little bit steeper than, uh, than 0.15. If we went all the way to I3, let's draw roughly what we would get. OK. So that line is certainly less than a slope of 0.28. It's a, approximately equal, I would say, to 0.15. The, in other words, the orange line I just drew is roughly parallel to the black line that I drew between I1 and I2. 
So at I3, the average has approximately reached 0.15. So my average line would look about like that. At I4, it's really easy to draw what the average is. The average is 0.28. Between I3 and I4, let me draw that one line. Uh, between I3 and I4, we'd have a line like this. And so the average uh, keeps on going up. Once you get to I4, it's equal to 0.28. So we equal 0.28 here. And then beyond I4, the average is a line from the origin to a point like this, or a point like this, or a point like this. And all, all such lines have the same slope, and the slope is 0.28. So after I4, the average is, remains at 0.28. So the average looks like that. So again, that's the average. And the blue is the marginal. So the average tax rate is monotonically increasing. Whenever you make more money, the average tax rate goes up. So in that sense, this was not an unfair tax system. But it was very hard to explain to the general public that even though the marginal tax rate was not monotonically increasing, that rich people did pay a lower marginal tax rate than people between I3 and I4, that their average tax rate was actually higher than people who made between I3 and I4. In fact, that was so hard to explain to the general public that this system became politically not, not tenable. People just didn't understand that average tax rates on rich people were higher than on people earning less than I-4 because the marginal tax rate was actually lower than people earning just below I-4. So shortly after this tax system went into, into effect, it was replaced by another one which, like all in U.S. income tax systems before and afterwards, had marginal tax rates that continued to go up with income. For example, the general shape would be this, like this, like this, like this, and just keep on going. And in this simple example, I have a 0% tax bracket, then a tax, second tax bracket, third tax bracket, and a fourth tax bracket. Sometimes the U.S. income tax system has had lots of tax brackets, other times not very many. But it's always, uh, except for the example I just indicated, here we have here we have income, here we have a tax. It's always had the always increasing shape, always a convex shape, where the uh, marginal w was always rising with income.